Hello my lads, what is up? So, it's been a while, hasn't it? But the thing is that uh, I got a job recently and uh, these past few weeks have been quite hectic for me with my free time being quite limited but as for the past few days I got uh, more used to how things should be so I should be able to continue with my Italian campaign as a matter of fact, right now I am working, or rather I am supposed to be working, but playing Victoria 2 is more important. <laughs> Sorry for this, let's get right into it. So on the previous episode, we were in a pretty strong position only to be cacked by the Germans. I recall that they pr pretty much uh, agreed to a peace wi within a month or two. Thus, I didn't even have enough time to add uh, any extra war goals. I got uh, only Lombardia. But uh, it's not a huge deal and uh, my truce with the Austrians and the French will expire in pretty much exactly a year. So yeah, in this episode we should hopefully aim for the reacquisition of Northern Italian territory. Unfortunately, my infamy is quite high, it is near 23, so other than getting uh, Italy, I probably won't be able to get any other concessions like uh, Corsica or any colonies. And anyways, let's get right into it. So taking into consideration that for a minimum of one year we will be stuck at peace no matter what, I will mostly begin by reorganizing my army and uh, working a little bit more on my industry which uh, unfortunately I have neglected for the past uh, two episodes or so. And I will also have to look into building Suez. I already have iron streamers but the decision is not showing up. Uh, I also have nitroglycerin. I believe that uh, I will also need machine tools to have the decision pop up. So yeah, we, we will get right into it. So I don't know if you lads he heard this. You probably did. Jets have been Holy fuck, another one. Military jets have been flying over my neighborhood all over the day, all over uh, the duration of this day. I am wondering what it is about. Are we finally getting into a war with Turkey? Oh, and that's another one. I will just be muting it whenever they pass by. So, d due to Victoria 2's fucked up uh, split system, some of my armies have split into one army getting two engineers and another army getting five infantry instead of both armies getting four, ar four uh, infantry and one engineer. So yeah, it will take me a while to fix this up. So despite my tropical wood production being at over 300, which is the highest in the world and amounts for almost 50% of the world's production, I am still exporting uh, to other countries over 150 tropical wood, which is almost half of it. Which really isn't ideal since tropical wood has uh, pretty much no use cases other than being transformed into luxury furniture, which pretty, man, pretty much means that I am allowing other countries to get a profit at the expense of my production, so I will simply ramp up uh, the production of luxury furniture all over my country because I want to be the only one benefiting from it. I don't want other countries to get rich from my resources. In fact, I will probably consider uh, building up uh, one luxury furniture factory in each state of mine. It might sound a little bit overkill, but it should be fine, I believe considering that uh, almost half of my production is unutilized. 
Alrighty, so now pretty much every single one of my states either has a luxury furniture factory or is in the process of building up. Oh, I fucked up here and I built a luxury clothes factory instead, my bad. And the best fact about having so many luxury furniture factories is that they drive up the demand of regular furniture factories which in turn uh, ramp up the demand of show meals and this creates a positive feedback loop where your uh, industrial options are significantly increased and more flexible due to increased internal demand and in my opinion industries based on wood have the best uh, kind of uh, positive feedback loop in the game by far Oh, and apparently we just discovered ironclads which are supposed to be a huge upgrade over the man wars. In fact, the man wars are considered to be so weak that uh, building two frigates is over worth it over a man of war. So even building those 16 is supposed to be a mistake. Or so I've heard anyways, the truth is that uh, is that I don't really know much about Victoria 2's naval combat. But yeah, since we got the money and since we just invented them, I will take, uh, I will take full advantage of them and immediately begin up upgrading my navy. Oh my bad, apparently you need a level 3 naval base in order to build them so yeah i guess we will have to wait for a few more years the closest thing to a modern fleet i can have right now is steam transports nothing else that's a little bit sad oh and now i can also build monitors and i wonder are they better than ironclads they are pretty much identical to ironclads except they are slightly faster, they have uh, a considerably better attack, but they also cost uh, 4 supplies weight instead of 3, so you, you're going to have uh, less of them. But yeah, overall I think that they are pretty much the best upgrade I, I can go for right now. Oh, and I got the Savoy assimilation event for Savoy. It will give me two infamy, which is going to be just uh, one infamy below the 25 limit. But it uh, has the potential to completely remove the French course from my land and uh, allow me to assimilate the French into North Italian. Plus it will stop that uh, stupid thing of the French constantly declaring war on me every five years. So yeah, even for two infamy, I think that it is worth it. Especially if I am lucky and get good RNG. Oh, and I get the Land Liberty Labor event. Always a great event to have. I can give uh, a huge bonus to Benin, or I can give a slight, a, not slight, a really respectable bonus to Lazio, which is actually my capital province. So, yeah, the answer is pretty obvious. And I am also right now approaching to the end date of the truce. In two months it will have expired. And yeah, I will immediately go for them. In fact, I am even considering uh, not mobilizing. I am really geared up right now. And I am confident in my ability to win this, even alone actually. So, if I do end up going solo at this, the plan is going to be the following. I simply defend the mountain border against France. I even have the Swiss under my sphere of influence, so they will not give them access. And I focus on destroying Austria. And hopefully I won't even have to mobilize, because as soon as I get enough war score to to add all of my cores as war goals, then I will invite Germany to deal the finishing blow for me. And hopefully they will not betray me again and uh, settle for uh, only one war goal. 
So yeah, unless I get fucked by something unpredictable, this should be definitely fine. So yeah, let's go. I also got this plus 4, uh, plus 5 attack and defense general Giovanni Clary. This guy should be quite useful. His only negative aspect is the minus 70% morale, but uh, it doesn't really matter because morale does not affect battles and you can simply replace him for a few days after the battle is over. So with Austria still having only 5 ships and with France having 12 ships, it probably will not be hard at all to build some war score. So yeah, let's go. So I'm beginning by attacking their army in the middle with my plus 5 general and it was a huge success. They lost uh, 10,000 men in a single tick. The fact that I finally got a good roll definitely helped there, but yeah. So far, so good. The friends have responded by occupying Tunis, but uh, I suppose that they are doing what they can. This region is practically worthless to me. Oh, and I was just attacked on the Alps by quite a strong general, and hopefully I will be able to repel him. And with the war, war, war uh, score that I am building up, I will do what uh, I couldn't do in the last war, and uh, pretty much claim all of my cores. We stack wiped 24,000 Austrians on Trevi, so not bad at all. The French attack also got repelled and they lost 60,000 troops. Alrighty, and having added all of my war goals, I can now also invite Germany. And hopefully they will not fuck me over. They accepted, that's great. And now it should be a done deal at this moment. The Austrians also kind of went uh, full special mode here. <laughs> they got an army of, the, of theirs from the Italian front and they marched it all the way to the French front. That's interesting. And right now with their invasion force defeated, with the majority of their armed forces destroyed, with my ships blockading their coasts, and with Germans also attacking them on, on a second front, I believe that uh, their surrender is going to be a matter of weeks actually. All that's left is for Germany to sue for peace when we got uh, enough war score, and for them obviously not to ask uh, for less than what we can get right now. Any day right now. And there we go, finally. The borders are, I would say, pretty aesthetic. On the Dalmatian coast, it uh, looks a little bit weird, actually. And the fact that the Austrians got uh, the coast of Montenegro make, uh, makes this uh, a little bit uh, even worse. But otherwise, I am pretty satisfied with how things are right now. We pretty much got all of our cores from Austria. I could have settled just for, for uh, fewer provinces, but, uh, you know, I could have not asked for split and sense, but uh, it's not that bad, uh, honestly. Now, I, I also got a decision. Uh, it gives me one infamy, but I believe it once, it, uh, once again removes... Uh, the course of the Italian substates. We'll get it. And yeah, I believe that this will be where I will be wrapping things up. The next obvious priority for me right now is going to be to develop these provinces, industrialize them, and in the long term colonize them with Italians. As for Austria-Hungary, I believe that I am more or less done with uh, making territorial expansions at their expense. Only other possible territorial expansion that I am considering is Bosnia, and even that will be in the form of a puppet. I don't actually want to integrate Bosnia. And, you know, also fix this, whatever the fuck this is. We also have to deal with the French question, they still have Corsica, I would have gotten the, it in this war if I didn't have so much infamy, we will definitely have to deal with the French, 
I will probably not go for any of the European terri mainland European territories. I will only go for Corsica and maybe northern Algeria so that uh, they will not have access to damage my colonies. It's time we, we go to war. And other than that, only natural uh, and reasonable uh, routes of expansion for me right now is uh, against Turkey. So I want to get Albania. I also want to get uh, northern Libya. Jerusalem is also on the table. Uh, in other words, I want to have a small Mediterranean colonial empire and uh, try to populate my colonies with Italians. I will also go for Eritrea once Suez is built and I can afford it, afford it infamy-wise. And after that, getting Persia and Romania under my sphere influence for their oil seems to be just about uh, the full extent of my expansion. But anyways, thank you for watching. Always glad to see you lads looking forward for my videos. And now that I kind of got used to the wage cack uh, lifestyle, I should be able to upload a little bit more consistently. At the very least, uh, you will not have to wait one or two months for me to upload. And speaking of wage cacking, a piece of advice for any other fellow wages that may be watching. The trick to mentally surviving <laughs> a stressful work environment is pretty much to be as uh, the least amount of efficient as you can possibly can without getting fired. This is 100% true when you are working for someone else. And it only took me really a couple of weeks to realize it. At uh, the first two weeks when I was being efficient and I was doing uh, all sorts of uh, tasks for them. I pretty much got uh, absolutely zero recognition. I never got uh, anything resembling uh, positive feedback. In fact, they kept uh, piling up uh, more and more errands for me to run and uh, their expectations grow grew. They expected me to do even more things than I already did. And once I kind of realized that and uh, kind of uh, started to chill down a little bit and take my own time and procrastinating, then I stopped having these problems. And when you are working for someone else, never ex expect your uh, work to be appre appreciated. And uh, the more uh, eager you are to work, the more of a fool they will take you for and they will aim to take full advantage of you. It's kind of like that uh, Chinese proverb that goes like that. Give a man a pack of grain and he will be grateful to you for the entirety of his life. Give him a silo of grain and he will hate you for not giving him two. People are just garbage like that. And if you wanna be work and uh, be efficient and live up to your full potential, then you have you absolutely have to work for yourself. And if you do not necessarily have the ability to do that or you don't have the correct circumstances for you to be able to do something like that. So let's say you hate programming, for example, so you can't imagine yourself learning to code and try to build something like a game or uh, if you absolutely have to be a wage cuck because of financial responsibilities or because you have an internship just like I do, I have a six month compulsory internship, then do know this one thing. There is absolutely nothing at all, nothing wrong at all with being a parasite because the game is completely rotten, spoiled, rigged and honestly it is so fucking pointless that uh, not participating at all or cheating is pretty much the best course of action. Like, just be a parasite like me. If you work, don't be productive. There is no reason to be productive. Nobody will, will acknowledge it. You won't get a promotion for being productive. You won't ever get a raise. The average employer just wants a retard who will be practically a slave to him 
and will produce as much for him as possible for the lowest amount of uh, compensation as possible, which is why those types of people always push for mass uncontrolled immigration. And unfortunately, there are very few exceptions to that rule, especially in a country like Greece, where the majority of the companies and businesses here are very small, like 95% of our businesses ha employ less than 7 people, to give you an idea. So the employers are incentivized to be even worse and treat their workers even worse in order to make meets end, because that's just the nature of small businesses. But yeah, that's enough rambling for the time being. I just wanted to share these thoughts with someone because I kind of got uh, a wake up call regarding on how fucked some things are now that I got to experience them myself. And yeah, as for me personally, I will try to survive this retarded workplace environment by being as inefficient as I can possibly be, so if someone gives me a task that needs to be completed in 15 minutes, then I will complete it in an hour or so, something like that. And by taking advantage, oh wait, I am not a Roomba. And by taking advantage of this extra energy, mental energy and motivation that I will be saving, I will continue trying to keep working on my own game, which I actually have uh, not touched for over two months by now. And yeah, I will be trying to make progress uh, every weekend or so. Even if I can get uh, half a page of uh, code done every weekend when I will have uh, free time, that will be a success for me. But yeah, trying hard to be useful, you know, and uh, prove the fact that uh, I can be of help and I can be productive on my workplace crushed my view of this world so thoroughly that uh, there is no way in hell that I will ever do such a thing again. Because ultimately, it's not like I am getting a crazy wage or something so I can feel guilty about... Uh, not meeting my obligations to my employer. I am only I am only getting paid at uh, 80% of the minimum wage. And I am getting paid that low as a supposedly educated worker. An educated worker with uh, four years of uh, university education, which universities are a meme by the way, but uh, you probably already know that. And on the meanwhile, there are... Uh, fucking refugees who work as cleaners at a McDonald's or something and make pretty much double of what I make. So I absolutely have uh, zero incentive to pretend that I give a shit or work hard pointlessly expecting that uh, anybody will notice. But yeah, sorry for this uh, little mental breakdown of mine. Hopefully by the next week the next episode will be out. Thank you for watching again, again uh, lads, and thank you for listening to my bullshit in case you haven't left already, and I will see you on the next one. Goodbye lads.